every device that's attached to the internet has an internet protocol address, an IP address. The IP address can be thought of sort of like a phone number. It's um, the one place you know you can reach this particular device. So for example, um, the device, the computer I'm using right now is at this IP address. And any, any kind of interaction on the web where you have to send a, a document or receive a document will need to know exactly where that IP is and need to know that address. The problem is that these numbers, which consist of, um, at least in the current system, uh, the most frequently used system today, consist of um, four numbers from 0 to 255 each. Uh, and this, actually, we've run out of space on this, just like we have are beginning to with the phone system. So um, this is being expanded, but for now, um, it's IP addresses that look like this, but it's really hard to remember what um, your own IP address is or the IP address is for your server. And uh, so what you really need is a, a kind of a phone book entry. And that phone book entry um, that associates your phone number with a particular name is called the domain name uh, system. The domain name system is, is basically that. It, it's a listing of domain names and, and how they can be resolved. That is how they can be um, turned into uh, a, an IP address. That's a complicated, you can see there's seven or eight steps here, but uh, basically what happens is that when you make a request on, in a web browser, you maybe type in a domain name as part of a URL, it needs to know which computer, which server to ask for that file from. And so the first thing it has to do is go and look at a DNS server and ask them what IP address does this particular um, domain refer to. So if I go to google.com, it says, okay, I can't just go to google.com. First, I have to go to the DNS server and look for what google.com is in terms of an IP address. And then it can go to that IP address directly and request the file. So in order to do that, you need to associate whatever name you want with a particular IP address. So you need to have, obviously, a computer with an IP address, and you do that by get, getting web hosting. Often web hosting companies will also work with the registrar for you and register a domain. But there can be advantages to having a separate um, domain registrar um, and having that be separate from your web hosting. If you're going with DreamHost, frankly, the, your, your yearly DreamHost fee pays for a domain, so it would be dumb to go outside of it. However, um, if, for example, you want you move domain web hosts frequently and you want to hold on to your domains, or you're managing a large number of domains with a large number of different web hosts, it can be helpful to kind of keep those separated. I use um, a registrar called Namecheap. If you've ever seen a Super Bowl, you probably are familiar with GoDaddy. There are a number of other registrars um, that can uh, register a domain for for you and associate it with a particular IP. In order to do that, you have to tell the registrar um, to make a record that will link your um, new domain with name servers for your host. So these are the name servers for DreamHost, for example. And you would enter these in as part of the record in your phone book entry. And that way it would know that it needed to go to DreamHost to find out what the IP address of your server was. You also have to let know, let uh, DreamHost know that you'll be hosting that domain there so that it knows what to do when people come knocking at its front door. And so by doing it on both sides, you then set up a clear association between your domain name and your IP address. Again, you may just be able to do this, especially if you're starting out, by asking your um, your hosting company to uh, register a domain for you, but not all host hosting companies do that, and it's not always uh, the best way to go anyway.